Okay, let's do this. Uh, welcome to Dad Knows Best. This video is a follow-up from my previous video. Uh, we're gonna be answering comments from the video. First off, thanks for all the engagement. I assumed that video on a channel with hardly any subscribers and uh, all the videos that I put out don't hit a whole bunch of views. Got more views pretty quickly. I figured it would get like 10, 20 views and uh, we're probably pushing about a thousand by the time this one comes out, which still isn't much in the grand scheme of things. So whatever, but I did think it was worth a look back at that video and the comments that I got. Obviously, I'm not gonna respond to all the comments here on YouTube in the comment section, but I will respond to some here in a video. If you didn't see the previous video, it was mainly about um, obviously the election, I did mention who I'm voting for, which is Trump. I did mention that I didn't vote for him in 2016 or 2020, uh, but I will be voting for him this year. And I didn't really touch on any reasons why, for specific reasons, because that's not really what the point of the video was. The video was more about the advice that I give to my kids on voting, the political philosophy that they've um, kind of been brought up in. It mainly stemmed from... Uh, <laughs> feedback from them of things that they've been hearing from other people uh, about pressuring to vote, about narratives and things like that. So that was kind of the premise of the video. I did uh, make a list of some other videos that are kind of follow-up videos to that uh, with some more at least advice to the younger generation. Being a father and a grandfather, there's definitely a lot of advice that I give to my kids that I feel like are really worth sharing, no matter the amount of negative comments that I would get for doing so. So on that note, let's go through some of the comments. Uh, they get pretty repetitive pretty quickly. So I'll go through some of the uh, unique ones and then I'll touch on a lot of the repetitiveness of them. One of the things I did touch on in the video was the fact that I am conservative. I said the word conservative. I lean conservative, probably would classify myself more as a conservative leaning libertarian, especially like I said, I didn't vote for Trump in 2016 or 2020. I voted for a libertarian candidate in 2016. I wrote in a candidate in 2020, but I do lean more towards the right and vote for more Republican candidates than I do anything else. With that said, I talked about being conservative and being part of the urbanist movement, which is a bit out there. <laughs> Most urbanists do fall in the uh, liberal side of things, the leftist side of the aisle, which for one gives me the opportunity to listen to ideas from people that aren't just in my bubble, which I do like, even though I don't agree with all of the things they say sometimes. But there are plenty of ideas and things that they do say that uh, I wish more people on my side of the aisle would listen to and take seriously. That being said, I did get a comment from somebody saying the biggest impact to urban design and the framework for planning came a lot from our federal government. I also did mention I wish the federal government was less of an issue, less of something something that you should think about, um, and that local elections play a bigger part in what your day-to-day -day life is, especially in the urbanist sense. And I didn't get the sense that this was really attacking what I said or rebutting what I said, uh, but it is a fact that a lot of the urban planning guidelines come from a federal bureaucracy, which is something that I'm completely against. People in state should obviously work together to uh, coordinate on things like interconnecting roads and transit. But I think for the most part, if a city wants to go completely out of the box and do its own thing, have its own rules and regulations, it should be able to do that. And for the most part, they can. It's just a matter of getting involved into local politics, like I said. So it was a good comment. Uh, kind of touched on a very small part of the video that I'm glad somebody picked up on and didn't just completely gloss over. I did get a comment of massively missing the bigger picture. Uh, I did respond with a bit of a snarky response, but I would be more curious on what the bigger picture uh, they are referring to. I did have a comment about January 6th and um, somebody that voted for Trump in 2016 
and 2020 saying they can't do it now because of January the 6th, which I'm always skeptical when I hear things like that. But if I'm going to take you for your word on that, well, I do think January 6th was a pretty stupid thing to do, a pretty bad thing to do, gained nothing for the people that did it except for being thrown in jail uh, a lot of times without even a trial or any kind of hearing just for being there, listening to some of the uh, stories of some of the people, as a matter of fact, have been pretty, pretty bad. But besides that, uh, calling it an insurrection, having the mindset that it would have ever really resulted in uh, Trump becoming the uh, president or taking over militarily or somehow uh, doing something like that is a pretty ridiculous idea. So while it's definitely not my favorite thing in the world that happened, it doesn't stop me at all from voting for the guy. And I'll touch more on that in just a second. But I guess I'll dive into the kind of storyline that became popular in the comments uh, where a bunch of people were just regurgitating the same thing. I did say in the video, if you're not informed, you don't need to vote. And again, that's direct advice that I gave to my kids because at least one of them felt that they were kind of bullied into the fact that they should go and vote, even though they don't really care and not informed. And if they did go and vote, they would vote the way that I told them to because they trust me on this stuff. But the narrative that uh, circulated in the comments were things like, I'm not informed, so I shouldn't go vote because voting for Donald Trump proves, saying that I'm gonna vote for Donald Trump proves that I'm uninformed, things like that. Uh, and then attacking a litany of narratives about Donald Trump uh, and why would you support things like that. And that's probably where we'll spend the bulk of this video. Uh, first off, I think a lot of people on the left don't give credit to a lot of Donald Trump voters. And I did, obviously, I've already mentioned it here too. I did say I didn't vote for the guy in 2016 and 2020. A lot of that had less to do with him specifically and uh, more to do with a lot of his supporters, especially online supporters. I don't like that stuff either. I think a lot of the people that vigorously support him are his worst enemy uh, as they the message that they're spreading and the vitriol that they spread are really bad. But I feel like the left side of the aisle uh, on the Democrat side is just as bad, if not worse. I've always said, if you wanna know what a Democrat uh, thinks about you, talk to them about state rights, talk to them about the 10th Amendment, and you'll really get a feel of what they think about people. And that's more and more pushing through without even talking about that specific issue that uh, they seem to be less trusting, less uh, friendly to, to people. And unfortunately, a lot of that is spilled over into the right side as well. And I can judge Donald Trump a little bit on the people that support him as he's just as bad sometimes I don't like a lot of the stuff that he says. I'm not a fan of him personally or the things that he's done. But if you haven't noticed, the Republican Party, the Trump uh, MAGA movement has become kind of the uh, gathering place of people that are politically homeless. It's the gathering place of actual differing ideas. So whenever he's attacked for things like becoming a dictator, uh, Nazi propaganda and all this stuff, it kind of just makes me chuckle because uh, he's the one that's brought in RFK. He brought in Vivek, who actually ran against him, uh, who's actually who I supported in the primaries. He's now brought in Tulsi Gabbard, who obviously ran for president in the Democrat side. He's bringing in Ron Paul, Elon Musk, a litany of people that um, wouldn't normally vote for a Republican candidate, but are comfortable voting for Donald Trump. Less of it being about, we love this guy specifically, and more of it being about, we need to stop with this side of the aisle having control and uh, try to bring something back and really start pushing in progress towards doing some good things. And I think one of the biggest divides between the two camps come down to what some refer to as the managerial class, um, the 
bureaucracy, which again is why I tend not to care as much about federal elections, except for the fact that I want it to be pulled back <laughs> as much as possible. The federal bureaucracy is definitely something that um, the left side wants to promote and grow, and mostly on the right side wants to lessen. There are people on the right that I continue to and other con others continue to fight against um, using the federal bureaucracies just for our side instead of bringing them back down. So that's another thing that I think is a bit different is it's easier for somebody on the right side of the aisle, somebody that's willing to vote for Donald Trump to criticize Donald Trump than it is for people on the left to criticize Kamala Harris or any stand-in uh, Democrat Party candidate. So again, I'm not gonna dive deep into specific things that were said in the comments. Most of them, again, just got very repetitive and have the same accusations that have either been disproven about Trump or flat out false or just character assassinations. So if you want to uh, continue this conversation, leave me some more hate comments or uh, whatever in the comments below. Again, I don't expect this one to get as much viewers as the first one, especially probably not the people that already commented on it. We'll never see this one and see uh, <laughs> any of the rebuttals to them. But I do have a few other videos in mind to kind of follow this up that can be after the elections um, that aren't specific to one person or party, uh, just some general advice and things. Things more about values and defining conservatism a bit more, uh, debunking some misconceptions, how a family should approach politics and talking to kids about them. More about a story of voting for the first time from my kids. Tips for the younger generation to not get sucked into uh, the bad side of politics. All that and more if you're interested to subscribe. Go ahead. I'll probably be putting more content on this channel as I've had a little bit more free time even though it's been kind of a fourth, fifth, sixth priority in my life. I feel compelled every once in a while to talk about things like this. So if it's something you're into, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you randomly in your feed. Until next time, thanks for watching.